as well as a uh, entrepreneur course called Boots to Business. Um, yep. Both it's those a SBA program. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great program. Uh, it definitely gives you some resources out there. Uh, one thing I noticed during the transition process, though, is that there's one key element missing, and that's um, state-specific transition services. Uh, so, uh, you know, st kind of trying to stay out here in Hawaii was a bit of a was a bit of a challenge. There's several barriers in the way, and I think Chase will uh, later elaborate on some of those. But um, you know, after I after I made some of those hurdles and I found my way through the uh, the jungle of resources, I was able to uh, successfully transition. But you know, I saw that some of my uh, brothers and sisters in arms didn't have the same experience. Uh, so that's where we came to uh, our concept for Master Console, uh, which is going to try to help refine that resource. And didn't you have an experience with uh, maybe a headhunter, a recruiter, giving you some advice? I did, actually. Um, I worked with the top four headhunters in, uh, in the country, and every single one of them told me that there was no possibility to transition successfully here in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and, and just to, to clarify to make sure that the audience is on the same page, the transition that we're talking about is going from active duty... Uh, service into the civilian workforce and th th there is a transition that has to take place you know there's a different mindset that people have to get comfortable with uh, and you know providing a bridge or support to make that happen is something that you would think that the military would be very good at unfortunately some places are and some places aren't um, and there's probably room for improvement for that service here well yeah the transition assistance program Reg is really geared to set uh, the service member transitioning up for success in their HOMA record, wherever they um, first join the military. And not a lot of folks, about 66%, want to go somewhere else. And so if any uh, service member or their family wants to make a home here in Hawaii, the, 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 s the lessons aren't structured to make them successful necessarily here all the time. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's a missed opportunity, I, I think. Um, but Chase, you're you're actually still on active duty, but you're going to be transitioning yourself here soon? Yes, sir. Right. So I am a full 40 hours a week working for the United States Army, and uh, they've got me employed uh, to, to the fullest extent there. Um, in the early morning hours or on the weekends, I'm uh, working with Craig to advance uh, our nonprofit. And then what really got me passionate to find some of the business opportunities here in Hawaii uh, was that I, I'm a partner and a member of Patriotic Online Marketplace. Uh, we call it pompusa.org. It's a military um, a website, peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, where service members, veterans, or their families can go on and sell their goods, services, and products. And, uh, and so as we're looking to start that business here in Hawaii and headquartered here with all the wonderful resources like Blue Startups and Dev League here that have been encouraging this, um, I started to dig into some of the business resources available to veterans or transitioning members here in Hawaii, and that's what we found is the missing link, doing it here. Well, and there are a lot of resources, but they're spread all over, and there's no one yeah. specific place like a clearinghouse that can help you sort through where all these different options and where they are and how to tap into them. That's exactly right. Everyone has a specialty and very uh, well-intentioned individuals that are providing services but no one is a, uh, a, a specific reference to say, hey, I know exactly mm -hmm. who you need to talk to for your need. And that's, that's kind of the role that you want to be able to serve at some point. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Um, and how far away are you from making that jump? Are yeah, you right. So uh, my paperwork, well, I will officially be out of the Army at the uh, end of the summer here. Um, so until then, um, getting pulled in two or three different yeah, directions. Well, it's tough. But yeah. You know, and you, you mentioned something that I think a lot of people seem to, to miss or maybe are not aware of, but it's not just the active duty personnel. It's also the spouses and in some cases the children. I mean, there's a huge resource there. Uh, and, and the state of Hawaii right now is running a 3% unemployment, which means they're, they're screaming for people. They're looking right. for people to come in and to work. And you've got the active duty, but you also have the spouses and the children. And so there's a huge resource out there that people can, can go to. Yes, sir. Uh, widely known statistic that uh, military spouses are one of the highest uh, labor under utilization rates in the country. And many on po uh, base and other military installations, they have some college courses or four or eight year degrees. And then plugging those uh, folks into the healthcare industry or the education industry, yeah. particularly in Hawaii, 
is a big supply that has not yet a huge demand. Well, and that was something that, that we had a chance to, to chat a little bit with Senator Green about, uh, is the, the educational and health care you know, opportunities that would be out there. I mean, both areas are screaming for qualified people. I mean, it's, I've been in Hawaii since 1973, and we've always seemed to have a shortage of teachers. You know, yeah. we're always recruiting a huge turnover. You know, one of the arguments is always, well, you know, military or, or military families, they're only here for a few years and they're gone. That's no different than what they're already experiencing. Right. And one thing that we're missing, too, another statistic, is that we do have a lot of veterans that are on the island or people that were associated with the military at one point or another. Uh, all said and told, we have roughly about 120,000 people that have been affiliated with the military that remain on island here, uh, whether it be active duty or have previously retired. So you're talking, um, you know, just a little bit over 15% uh, of the island is actually militarily affiliated. And that's a, that's a great population right there with, um, you know, excellent skills that the military has taught them and, right. you know, sent them out to the civilian workforce, workforce with. You know, and I think if we, were figure, if we were able to figure out a way to tap into that, we could solve a lot of our, our challenges here in Hawaii that for teachers and for health care providers and, and support and, and maybe even some other areas. But we need to take a short break here. Um, uh, we're going to be back in about 60 seconds. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we heard talking about the Ma Master Council, which uh, could be a part of the solution of finding qualified teachers and healthcare workers and other skilled laborers here in Hawaii. So we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet, please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Today we're talking with the two co-founders of the Master Council, which helps military and civilian uh, businesses tap into the resources that are available and help solve some of our, our skilled labor challenges that we have here in Hawaii. Uh, it's a brand new organization. It's still in developmental stages. Uh, we're looking for people that might be interested in participating, particularly employers. If there's any employers out there that are, are having a hard time finding skilled labor, uh, please reach out to either Chase or to Craig, and, and they'll be able to uh, do some matchmaking and, and help you solve that problem. But uh, let's get back to you know our discussions here. Uh, there, there's a couple areas that are specific that uh, you know there's some skills available that can certainly help Hawaii, and, and one of those is technology. Yeah, so the, uh, the tech world in Hawaii uh, is starting to grow a bit. Uh, a lot of the companies that we're working with are the service providers. Um, they're tech-focused, and uh, they're looking to hire um, you know, uh, either military or civilian um, IT experts like that uh, you know, can really augment their systems or you know, bring new business to Hawaii. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we want to do is start to put a lot of, you know, a lot of focus towards that, um, start matching the IT experts like with these companies uh, that are starving for talent. Um, you know, we've heard it said that you know they want to create the next Palo Alto here in Hawaii, which that would be, would be nice if we could do it. It would be. It's a lofty, uh, lofty um, you know goal, but I think it's something that is achievable in time. And uh, you know, the military sure as hell can uh, put some uh, back behind Absolutely. that. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if we can just get halfway there, we're going to be doing good. Right. You know, it's it'd be great. All right. Very good. And so. How, how would it work? I mean, if, uh, if we wanted to create a, a Palo Alto here and, and get some of the, the skilled labor to, to stay and be focused, um, does a company, how do they get in touch with you to be able to start, you know, finding out about these uh, resources? Right. So uh, we've been uh, campaigning here in Hawaii for a while now, uh, speaking with different uh, organizations. Um, you know, we can, uh, we can be reached at any time. I think at the end we'll uh, provide our information. But um, 
you know, uh, if they uh, if they want to get actively involved, uh, they have to uh, just reach out to us. Um, we can put them on the service provider list, and um, you know, if they have a specific need for, you know, any type of talent, or if they want to help, uh, you know, do placement services, uh, we have those resources readily available. Very um, good. So uh, one thing that uh, our company is focusing on, I do want to bring up, is that we have a program called Invest, which is the Integrated State uh, Veteran State Transition Program. Uh, that's going to help uh, these service members transition successfully from, um, you know, from their military service. Uh, this program is in uh, no competition with the current uh, transition assistance program. I'll make that a uh, disclaimer. Uh, but what we are trying to do, though, is uh, augment those services to try to help retain uh, these soldiers in state, or sorry, service members in state. Um, you know, and uh, as they come through our invest program, these service providers are going to be able to see, you know, the type of talent that we're generating out of our program. Which would be impressive. Yeah, Chase. Absolutely. And one thing we fully recognize is um, all 8,500 odd service members that transition out of the military from Hawaii yearly, they're not well, all meant... Let, let's repeat that. 8,500 people transition out of the military every year in Hawaii. That's right. Yeah, and every year it's a plus or minus, wow. but that's where we can really kind of peg it down to. And we understand that um, not all of those are meant for Hawaii. Now, back on the mainland, those states have a, an average of 33% of uh, those, those service members that are transitioning out. Make, so so if, if they have military within their yeah. state, 33% of them end up staying there? Right. And so for us, it would be, again, I think this last year, we were right in uh, the 2,650 service members at the national average would have stayed and made homes and uh, new lives here in Hawaii locally as civilians. Now, we're not saying we're going to be 33% on par with Texas or Tennessee mm -hmm. or anything. But we can sure do a lot better than where we're at now. Which is where? Uh, yeah, between, Three to five percent. Right. And so we're in the low single digits. Wow. And so the opportunity cost is, is enormous. See, that's, and that's the point I, I'm trying to make yeah. is that, you know, there is a huge untapped market there. I mean, if the country is at 30 plus percent yeah. and we're only at, at five percent, um, you know, we're really not taking advantage of the opportunity that's presented. There's a lot of yeah, lost right. opportunity costs, and um, Chase, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. the numbers are uh, yep. somewhere around a billion over five years. Absolutely. So we've been extraordinarily conservative in our calculations and economic models, but for every veteran retained, and that's one new metric we're trying to get the state as well as businesses to pay attention to, uh, veteran retention. For every veteran retained, uh, you can expect anywhere between $9,500 and um, $1,100 $1, in tax revenue mm, mm. Uh, just for that one person or family, so it's averaged, annually. Total economic impact, though, from all the dollars that they earn and spend and all those dollars are created, we've pegged it down very conservatively to $144,000 per veteran per year. So state revenue and total commerce in the state just climbs exponentially the more veterans uh, are, right. are hang back here. And, you know, I think it's important for everybody to realize that when we talk about veterans, we're talking about not just people that carry a weapon and pull the trigger. I mean, there's a lot of support groups that, that support those guys yeah. that, that have some very highly skilled uh, capabilities. Absolutely. Well, one of the, um, one of the service members that approached us uh, when we were getting our initial push out there you know, was a 16-year uh, logistics officer, a guy who retired as a major, hadn't found work in one year. Um, and, you know, with the amount of resources that are out there, you know, these things shouldn't be happening. We should have, um, you know, some sort of program like that, you know, helps them find the right resources if they want to stay here and stay. Well, a, a logistics officer of, of that rank would, would probably have a significant amount of responsibility for moving and making sure that things get from point A to point B when they're supposed yeah. to. So, you know, it's it's a huge undertaking it's a big job and it takes a 